Today we discuss about the equation of motions that are used to solve the single degree radial system behavior. So basically vibration is a oscillatory motion. So vibration we can consider as a oscillatory motion. Any oscillatory motion we can consider as a vibration. So these main causes of this vibration are generally in mechanical engineering these are the unbalances. These unbalances may be may be in rotary motion or in maybe in reciprocating motion. <coughs> so these unbalances are the major causes in as we consider uh, for mechanical engineering another reason is the dry friction another reason is the dry friction and uh, in combination with all these there may be certain excitation external excitations these are caused by wind or earthquake <coughs> so these are the general uh, causes of this vibrations major cause is the unbalance and this unbalance may be uh, sometime due to the uh, temperature uh, uneven temperature distribution so vibration uh, we uh, write down the equation of motion for this any vibratory body considering as a single degree of freedom system so by writing this single degree freedom system equation we consider generally we consider this system as a mass spring and sometime and as we extend it again another term as a damping term so we start with this uh, simple very simple basic system as a mass and stiffness so these two terms are required for vibration if any system we have to vibrate we require these two properties either it, it, it must be mass and it must have some stiffness then and then only that system will be vibrate so <clears throat> in this while writing this equation of motion for this vibratory system there are some assumptions so this mass is a uh, point mass this mass is a point mass this mass must be point mass and this stiffness the spring which represent the stiffness or internal resistance for deflection provided by that system that stiffness k or the spring must have or doesn't have any mass the stiffness have doesn't have any mass and the deflection we will consider for the system deflection we consider for the system must be other in the linear region must be in the linear region as we consider the that stress strain relationship so in linear region it means that spring must deflect or must contact or must be expanded within this linear region if we <coughs> draw stress strain curve so this whatever this the spring must be stretched or compressed within this linear region. So this is the major assumptions that are we consider while writing this equation of motion. So we start, we start, we can write this equation of motion by considering four methods. By considering four methods, and generally these equation of motions we can write by Newton's second law of motion by using Newton's second law of motion dr Lambert's principle by using dr Lambert's principle third one is the Rayleigh's method and fourth one is the by energy method so these are the four methods by using this four method we can write this equation of motion for the single degree of freedom system then we can find out <clears throat> what is the behavior of that particular system 
under this vibration. <coughs> so we start with this Newton second law of motion. So in Newton second law of motion, that's acceleration. That accelerate of change of momentum is we consider as a summation of force. So mass into acceleration. So here we acceleration we denote this acceleration as a x double dot is equal to summation of forces. So in this system, first we write free body diagram. First we draw free body diagram for this mass and our different forces acting on this masses on this mass are the acceleration force mx double dot suppose we consider the displacement in the downward direction so this and we consider the downward direction as a positive one and in this case this mx double dot is a acceleration force which is acting on the downward similarly equal amount of that acceleration force but in opposite direction there is a some inertia force <clears throat> there is a some inertia force having same magnitude but in opposite direction and one more force is the opposing force is the spring force kx so, so, so kx is the spring force which is acting on the upward direction if we consider the displacement of that mass in the downward direction so we can with this with this forces and with this direction of these forces we can write down we can write down that as a mx double dot is equal to now here sub forces only one force we consider as a spring force and having a upward direction so it is negative minus kx <coughs> so this equation of motion we can write as a mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero so with this newton second law of motion we can write down equation of motion as a mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0. Now with d elements equation, with d elements equation that force is balanced in the d element equation that excitation force is balanced by the inertia force. So this mx double dot, so, so summation of all the forces becomes as 0 or the system make to the rest position by applying some inertia force. So and then, then and then only that system becomes to the rest. So if we consider that, if we consider that then for d elements equation, we can write that summation of this all forces equal to zero and mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero. Now here this mx double dot is the inertia force, here not as acceleration force. <coughs> so in Newton second law of motion this mx double dot is a acceleration force having direction in the downward direction having down direction in the downward direction now here this as inertia force <coughs> having direction in the upward side this inertia force having direction in the upward side so summation of all the forces equal to zero in the d elements principle mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero so we can get again same equation of motion for that single degree of system so similarly in Rayleigh's equation, <coughs> in Rayleigh's equation, we can consider maximum kinetic energy equal to the maximum potential energy. So maximum kinetic energy we can consider as a one half mx dot square is equal to one half kx square. So maximum kinetic energy equal to maximum potential energy. And why with this Rayleigh's method we can generally obtain that first natural frequency of that particular system. <coughs> so now if we simplify this, if we simplify first so displacement we can consider as a simple harmonic motion x is equal to a sin omega t. So x dot is equal to a omega, a omega cos omega t. So like that. So for maximum displacement for maximum displacement we can write so this maximum displacement we can write as a a so maximum displacement or this a is a maximum displacement this a is a maximum displacement we can write as a a and for x dot for x dot we can write as a omega n into a 
so a is a amplitude or maximum displacement of that particular system so we can write x dot is equal to omega in a and maximum displacement x is equal to a capital a so by using this equation this becomes as a one half m omega l a square is equal to one half k a square so after simplification of this we get m omega l square is equal to k and omega l square is equal to k by m and omega n is equal to under k by m that same omega n we can obtain here in this equation of motions so by using this method also we can get that same equation of motion and energy in energy method in energy method we can we can consider that now in any vibration vibration that summation of kinetic energy and potential energy become constant so energy always it is constant and if you consider and there is a exchange of kinetic energy and potential energy during vibration of the body so if we consider that summation of we can write summation of kinetic energy and potential energy is equal to constant so we can write this and if we write this kinetic energy is equal to one half mx dot square plus potential energy one half kx square is equal to constant <coughs> so if you simplify this if you differentiate this if you differentiate this with respect to time then you will get as a one half 2mx dot x double dot plus one half 2kx x dot is equal to zero so after simplifying this we will get mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero so again we get that same equation of motion for that single degree of freedom system so while deriving this equation of motion or by simplifying this equation of motion we consider that vibratory motion as a simple harmonic motion and in that simple harmonic motion there is a, a energy exchange energy exchange of kinetic energy and potential energy but total energy is remain constant so we consider this energy uh, terms energy terms in this equation of uh, in energy method to write down the equation of motion so this simple harmonic motion x is equal to we can write as a, a sin omega t for velocity we can write as a, a omega cos omega t and x double dot acceleration we can write as a, a omega square sin omega t so while we can represent we can represent this we can represent this on that vector diagram we can represent this on this vector diagram like this so x is a displacement vector x is a displacement vector with angle omega t and having magnitude a having magnitude a and x double x dot x dot having some phase difference having some phase difference as a omega t plus pi by 2 omega t plus pi by 2 but having with magnitude a omega having magnitude with a omega similarly for acceleration again there is some phase difference of 90 degree with this velocity vector and it again becomes as a 90 degree phase shift with this velocity vector and having magnitude a omega square so we can represent on this vector diagram also the displacement x is equal to a sin omega t x dot is equal to e omega cos omega t x double dot is equal to e omega square sin omega t so these we can write this equation of motion by four different methods four different methods either newton second law of motion either dl limits principle either Rayleigh's method or either energy method as per our convenience we can write down equation of motion by using this any any for any of these four methods and this equation of motion now this equation of motion we simplify mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero now we simplify this equation and we obtain solution for this equation of motion for solution of this equation of motion is nothing but displacement or velocity or acceleration 
<coughs> so solution of this system is nothing but by simplifying this equation or by solving this equation it is a differential second order differential equation so by simplifying this equation of motion we can obtain either displacement or velocity or acceleration so for that particular system for this particular spring mass system for this particular spring mass system that solutions are nothing but the displacement how much is the displacement of that system at particular time t or how much is have this system have velocity at particular time t or how much that system has acceleration at particular time t so this is nothing but the solution of this particular system and we simplify this we simplify the second order differential equation and we can obtain that solution for this system in terms of x in terms of x or in terms of x dot or in terms of x double dot so in further lectures we discuss about this solution of this differential equation m x double dot plus k x is equal to zero and then after that after that before this we go to the solution of this differential equation we add one another term as a damping term so in the next topic we discuss we add some of this damping term and this equation of motion now changes as a mx double dot plus kx plus cx dot is equal to zero so in next time next lecture uh, or next topic we discuss or we add this damping term in this and then we go toward the solution of this particular equation of motion or particular solution of this vibratory system by considering a single degree of freedom system and again we add or modify that system or we consider another displacement and it becomes a this 2 degree freedom system 3 degree freedom system like that so uh, in this in this particular topic we discuss about the how we can represent any system how we can represent any system as a single degree freedom system with a point mass with a point mass internal resistance we represent as a stiffness k and with this with this representation we can write down that solution of this particular system as a or equation of that particular system as a mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero now we hear basic assumptions we must consider or must remember that basic assumptions as that mass is a point mass that spring have doesn't not having any mass not having any mass and that spring having deflection within this linear region within this linear region only if this deflection if you provide deflection of the spring beyond this elastic limit or beyond this linear region then it is not we can cannot write this equation like this mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero in such case in such case if you extend that spring beyond this linear region this equation of motion consider or introduce some non-linearity term and this equation modified with some non-linearity term and that equation will not become simple one it, it becomes a you know, addition it adds some non-linearity term and then again we will simplify that <coughs> so for for basic understanding purpose we consider only a linear region and we can write this equation of motion as a mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero so in this in this topic we discuss about this equation of motion four different methods what are the general causes what are the general causes of that vibrations generally these are the rotary motion and the reciprocating motion as, as, as we consider as a mechanical engineering area so major major causes are the unbalances major causes are the unbalances so it may be rotary motion or it may be reciprocal motion or maybe it dry friction external excitation sometimes wind earthquakes or any another external excitation causes road unevenness in vehicles some, sometime so these are these are external excitation cases, these are external excitation cases. So major causes are the unbalances. As soon as for 
mechanical engineering we consider uh, generally it is unbalanced you can consider as a major cause is unbalanced so we discuss about the energy methods and all these four methods we can write equation of motion mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero we add another term or and also we write this displacement velocity and acceleration vector on this vector diagram with their magnitudes a, a omega a omega square respectively and with phase difference as a displacement velocity have phase difference 90 velocity acceleration have another phase difference of 90 like that so with this equation of motion with this solution of that particular displacement we can simply find and with addition of some damping term we can write down this equation of motion and again we go towards the solution of this particular equation solution is nothing but we can find out displacement velocity or acceleration of that particular system particular system at particular time at particular time so with this we conclude this topic we conclude this topic and in next topic we add some damping term add some damping term c we add some damping term c and then we write down or modify this equation of motion and we can find out that solution of this equation